Blue Gum Farm is continuing its rich history as one of Victoria's leading stud farms. And now they've added a third stallion, joining Asfura's sire Flying Arty and the young son of Sebring, Sajardin. Oxley Road is a stakes winning full brother to Exceedance and his looks will blow you away. It's wonderful being here at Blue Gum Farm in Victoria, Sean, and just a gorgeous day. It's so exciting, a new boy here in Oxley Road. He's a gorgeous, gorgeous son of Exceed and Excel. We know, of course, the full brother to Exceedance, who's standing in the Hunter Valley. This sire is just a great opportunity for Victorian breeders, isn't he? Absolutely. I mean, he's a Group 2 winner, Group 1 placed. Peter Moody has always said he's one of the fastest colts he's ever trained. Obviously got held up a little bit in his, um, in his career with COVID because he was obviously originally brought to go to Singapore. So he started late, but he made a good impression. He was very much talked about, obviously culminating in a third in the, in the Oakley Plate beyond two very good fillies. So yeah, he's, he's certainly um, shown he has a lovely amount of ability. Oxley Ray Williams with a vice-like grip. He won on debut and then at only his second start he won the Zedative Stakes and then only a few starts later he won that Group 2 Caulfield Sprint. So he was out and, and going, like soon, once he was racing, he was out there with the elite. Absolutely and there's clearly there was a school of thought that he was going to be an elite horse. You know, to Peter's credit he'll say that he, he probably the horse up a little bit by running him on wet tracks and the horse just does not go on wet tracks at all. Over a very wet period that we had here, he obviously was disadvantaged in terms of having four or five runs on, on uh, rain affected tracks. And we talk about Lofty Strike going to stud this year and he ran second in the Oakley Plate. Um, Extreme Choice runner placing in the Oakley Plate, Schnitzel, uh, so many good sires have run in the Oakley Plate. And his sire, of course, Exceed and Excel, uh, you know, he has a number of sire sons that are, you know, some of them very recently retired. How does this guy differ a bit to some of those? In a lot of ways, I think he is very Exceed, possibly more so than a lot in the scope that he has. A lot of leg, a very, very good head, and which I think is typical of Exceed but maybe not of all his sons, and um, lovely shoulder, and you can see why he's fast. And of course, the damn Bonnie Mac, an elite broodmare, isn't she? As well as Exceedance, who we know is standing for $33,000 in the Hunter Valley. She also threw Mac and Cheese, who was a dual stakes winner. So a beautiful mare by Thorn Park. He's so much like him, but, but there's even more substance, isn't there? As you said, a bit more leg under him and, and you know, good bone. He's, he's a beautiful horse. Yeah, it's sort of sticking to the theme we've got here of colonial speed and uh, certainly all the horses that are here have got that lovely colonial bone, very, very short coupled, good fast sons of um, proven, proven stallions. With Oxley Road, the opportunity is that he is in Victoria, that Exceedance has done the job in his first crop and we've priced him to, to satisfy breeders and give them a chance to, to um, share in the success if he makes it. Well, Sir Jardin, of course, the son of Sebring, it's fantastic to see the first foals here at Blue Gum Farm and around the district as well. Breeders Plate, Todman and Million Dollar Golden Gift winner Sir Jardin uh, won a red anchor at three from the great procrastinate family. Hasn't he let down beautifully? Oh, absolutely. He's just an absolute stunning horse. I mean, obviously, Gary Portelli always said if you were going to paint a horse, you'd paint Sir Jardin just in, ter in type. He's um, certainly heavier and stronger this year. Bearing in mind that when he went to study, he was really only three, just finishing his three-year-old career. So now as a four-year-old, he really has matured. His foals are stunning. We're, we're thrilled. We've got about five here and there's probably three or four others born elsewhere. The foals that we've got here, um, what we're seeing with them is that they've got his head, certainly right down to having either a star or a blaze. Um, so lovely, lovely presence to them. They've certainly got a very good back leg, same as him. They've all got substance to them. So we couldn't be happier like we've only got foals that are seven days old sort of thing so seven to ten days old so as as we get through the next few weeks we'll see more and more development of them but um, from what we've seen and certainly from people that have them that um, people we, we deeply respect like the Boness, Boness and so on, John and Helen North um, are thrilled with what they've got. And as Fora has gone on to win the King Charles III. And Flying Artie, it's a great whole of you know breeding industry life cycle, isn't it? This grandson of Rubiton who stood here at Blue Gum, um, he's just done such a wonderful job. We already know horses like Artorias who's retired to stud, but as Fura winning at Royal Ascot, the King Charles 
the third as it's now known, the, the old golden uh, diamond and platinum jubilee stakes. And she's continued on with her incredible European form. It's been so exciting to see, hasn't it? Oh, absolutely. And she's a product of Euroa. So she's just around the, you know, her mother's stand is just around the corner. And um, we've confirmed that her mum's coming back to him this year, which is fantastic. But I mean, there's not a horse doing a better job with the crops that he's got in the country at the moment. So he's severely underrated. He's got his biggest crop of rising two-year-olds about to go. He's got a half, si half brother to the um, Golden Slipper winner that is, is now in the, in the Waterhouse stable. So there's a lot of upside with him. Breeding to him this year is, is probably a smart move because at the end of the day, off the back of his two-year-old crop this year, there'll be significant improvement again but every single day he's getting a winner. I mean, he had a winner this week at Ballarat by five lengths. He's had seven winners in seven days. Just keeps doing the job. He was a, he was a world champion racehorse, so um, he's got great movement. He's got great uh, action to him. Um, and, you know, a horse like Democracy Manifest could just kick him to a third group one winner in this spring. I mean, I know Chris Waller's very, very keen on Democracy Manifest in the Epsom, as are the owners. So, you know, he could turn around and have three group one winners out of that crop. And, you know, there's not too many stains that do that. And you've kept him, you know, $16,500. That's incredible. Well, we want a price to the market. Like, at the end of the day, breeders are doing it tough at the moment, as we all know. And um, we've tried to keep all of our stands at a reasonable price to give people the opportunity to breed to them and, um, and have some upside with us. Um, for us, you know, it's about getting foals on the ground so that we can prove to, to, to everyone that the horse is worth, worth of going to and he can always go up next year. I mean, you've got these great racehorses on the track as well through Trilogy and you've got a great partnership there with the Stennings. It's a really exciting time of year for you guys, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Spring's always a wonderful time for everyone. We've got, you know, rising two-year-olds about to start trialling and, um, you know, some nice horses that are going from three-year-old to four-year-old and two-year-old to three-year-old. So there's plenty to like about what's going to happen over the next few months.